Hey my friends, welcome to another Affinity Designer tutorial and today I will show you how to do this little cute paper cut effect. Here it is without the mask, you can see it actually fills the complete canvas. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. It's very important, thank you very much. Let's get started. So I will delete everything so we start fresh and I'm gonna show you what to do. First of all, we're gonna use the pencil tool. You wanna to set the stroke to a black color, the width to one point, and activate the stabilizer over here. Set the length over here, the rope length, to what feels right to you. In this case, I set it to 35. And then you wanna draw a shape uh, like this, like you would cut out from a paper and make sure that the end lines are very, the end points are very close to each other and on a rather straight line because otherwise you get kind of a bendy, not so good looking effect, like an edge in there. It's kind of hard to fix that. Okay, so we're going to again use the pencil tool and make a second cut around the first one. And you can do each of these cuts if you want to by hand. I'm not going to do that because I want to show you how to do it a little bit quicker. This was not a good way to do that. Let's select the other point, connect those two, and it looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. You can see here we have now the problem that they're now. Okay, now it looks good. Okay, um, good. So what I'm going to do is to select this curve and then I'm going to hit Control and J like Choi on my keyboard to duplicate it. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and also the control key so it stays centered. And I will move this outward a little bit, uh, maybe this far, okay. And now I'm just hitting Control J again and you can see that this remembers to resize it and you can press it multiple times and it will just move outwards and um, yeah do the resizing for you. Of course, like I said, you can do each of these layers by hand individually if you want to. Good. What we have to do next is we want to uh, like set a fill color and at the same time we want to set um, the line color, the stroke color to transparent. So the way we are doing this, and I pre-selected three different colors, is that this means like when the colors are looping, this means that every third of my layers has to be blue. So I dragged out from over here, I dragged out my layer window and holding my control key, I will select every third layer and then click on the blue color. And you can see that this changed the stroke color, not the fill color. And this is by design or like I, I use it as a method because what I'm doing now is because before, when you remember, we had a stroke color, which was black, but we did not have a fill color. So now I'm switching these two colors. And now I have a fill color, but I don't have a stroke color, which is exactly what we need. So let's go back uh, to the second layer and then again every third layer like this. And I will make this orange and again switch my colors. And then again with these other layers here, select the green color and then switch it like this. Okay, you can't see very much on the screen right now, um, which is, well, the reason of the layering of the different layers. So it's normal at this uh, moment in the tutorial. What we want to do next is to select all of the co uh, the layers. So you want to mouse select the lowest layer, then hold the shift key and click on the topmost layer like this. So all of them are selected. And then on your keyboard, hold or not hold, but press Control J again, like Joy, like this. So you can see it duplicated all of the layers, but it always put it on top of each of the layers that it copied, which is useful for us because now comes a little bit of a tedious part. What we need to do is always select the of the uh, like the duplicated layer, the top one, and move it up one layer. So it's like this, that they are mixed with the other color. And then you select both of them, uh, the duplication, and the other layer that's now below that, like, sorry, like this, 
these two and you click on subtract. So this is cookie, uh, cookie cutting a hole in the middle of that layer in the size of the layer below. I hope that's kind of a good explanation. You can see on the screen how it looks right now. So we move this up and then we select, whoops, we select both of these layers and click, click subtract. And we do this for all the layers. So select and subtract. Move it up, select both of them and subtract. Move it up, select both of them and subtract. You can see it's very easy. Uh, it's a bit tedious, of course, but we have to do that because we need to cut a hole in all of these layers and we need the duplicated layer because you can see of the two, always only one comes back out. It's like with the Thunderdome, actually. Um, do we have to do this twice here? I'm not sure. Let's see. If I now hide this layer, we have a white layer here. Um... I think I will just take this and put it in the back. That should be good enough. Okay, perfect, good. So now what I'm going to do is I will move my layer window back in here, or no, actually I will let it stay out here so you can see the different um, layers that I'm selecting. So I'm not selecting this one, which is the most inner layer. In this case, it should always also, it should also be the lowest layer. In this case, it's not because I put this biggest layer on the uh, lowest position. But what we want to do is to select the layer on top of this one. So this one, the next one. And we want to set this with the effect to outer shadow. And you have to enter it each time by hand. Um, that's a bit tedious, I know, but the problem is if I copy now this effect to the other layer, it will also resize the effect. I want to have the shadow be the exact same size and each time. And uh, for some reason, Affinity Designer is also resizing the effect and I don't want to have that. So, okay, let's enter this uh, by hand. It's not that hard and it doesn't take that long unless you have like really many layers. But yeah, I think we can go through this in a very quick way. And afterwards, I will show you how to make the mask effect with the text. So stay tuned. Um, and you can see this effect is very playful, it's very fast. And it can be very fun. You can do paper cutouts even from scenes with characters and landscapes and all this kind of thing, like really, really cool stuff. I'm just showing you in this case how it works um, so you can apply it on your own. So the next thing, now we are done, the next thing you want to do is to again select all of the layers. So click on one of the layers, the upper one in this case, and then hold shift and click on the lowest layer. So all of them are selected in blue and then uh, press Ctrl and G on your keyboard to create a group. Now I will move my layer window back in here so it snaps into uh, these other uh, windows here basically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my artistic text tool, like the normal text tool basically, and I will drag it out to a size that I want to use and I will write paper. You can of course write whatever you want. Um, Let's resize that a little bit, move it into the middle of our picture uh, like this. Okay, and so the only thing you have to do now is you can see we have the group and on top of the group is our text layer. So right click on the text layer and just click mask below. And there we have it. And you can do one more thing now, select your group, go into effects and again set the outer, set, uh, uh, outer shadow settings to the same settings that you have done before. So we have the same shadows inside and outside of our paper uh, text effect. You can see it looks pretty cool. Thank you very much. That was the tutorial. I'm looking forward to what you create with that. Join our um, Reddit group and show what you have created. Bye. Have a nice day.